Howdy howdy guys and girls, hopefully everyone's doing alright, I know I am. Today we're going to be taking a look at this, the Best Tool and the companion application to go with it, Best and Best Pro. Now I know a lot of people have asked questions in relation to this particular device and of course I wanted to try and make a video which explain everything thoroughly, not only for those who know what they're doing in relation to either servicing uh, the bang motors, but for those of you who are relatively new and of course you just want to gain the best and maximize the effectiveness of the motors so if this video is useful for you do us a massive favor and of course smash that like button and share it with like-minded individuals because the more people know the better but without further ado let's have a deep dive into this what you need to know so that moving forward there is no further misinterpretations So what is the best tool ladies and gentlemen? Well essentially this is four things rolled into one. This is your diagnostic tool, this is your tuning and parameter setting tool, it is your calibration tool and it's your firmware update tool as well. It is your diagnostic tool. Now essentially this device allows you to connect the, the bang system in its entirety ladies and gentlemen, that being motor, battery, display, wiring loom, speed sensor and any other pieces within the system which has been connected to your e-bike. Now essentially this device allows you to understand if any particular part of the system has failed so that if you do need to swap it out you're not buying unnecessarily as opposed to just making sure that you replace the correct piece of the system so that the system works perfectly. It is your tuning and parameter settings tool, ladies and gentlemen. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, let's take two e-bikes which I have in my collection which both use the same motor. Let's take the Dengfu E10 and the Vita Steam Mafique LT. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with either bike, I've got videos on my channel explaining both, so links in the description. But just in case, the E10, that's rolling on 29 inch wheels, and the Vita Seba VKLT, that's a mullet setup, so it's of course running a 27.5 rear wheel air back, 29 up front. Now, you may be of the belief that all the fan motors are the same, but of course they do need to be tuned in conjunction with what bikes they are set up on. So of course with my Denko E10, the rear wheel size, the rear wheel circumference, reflects the fact that it is paired with a 29 ENTV. Whereas with the Vita C Mafique LT, the M510 is tuned so it recognizes a 27.5 inch rear wheel and circumference. Uh, in addition, there are other parameters which can also be changed as well, things such as uh, speed limit, speed restriction, acceleration, power, and even the start angle, which that's more associated with Best Pro, which we'll touch upon in a second. But as I said, the Best Tool allows you to change the tuning and the parameter settings within your given Bafang motor. It is your calibration tool, ladies and gentlemen. Now, some of you might be of the belief that calibration is similar to tuning, and that's where you'd be wrong, especially when it comes to the Fang motors. In fact, that brings me nicely to this motor here. This is the Fang M600, which I've recently picked up, which was in a dire need of service. And internally, there were some other issues which I've needed to sort out. But fundamentally, the real reason why it failed was because of this, the controller. The controller had unfortunately failed. Now, the good news is, is that I do have a couple of spare controllers ready to go and to put into this motor. But just because if I plug it in, that doesn't necessarily mean that this motor will work. Hence, this will need to be calibrated. Now, of course, the calibration will allow this controller to pair with this motor so it recognizes everything, such as the positioning within the halls, the heat, power, you name it. This will need to be calibrated so that everything works, so that in terms of communications, as well as operations, the controller, the motor, everything works. So again, this is your calibration tool. This is your firmware update or firmware swapping tool. Now essentially what that means is that with this I'm able to swap the firmware which governs how the motor responds and what it recognises in relation to the system in its entirety. So for example, a lot of you may have seen electric mountain bikes which use either the M500, the M510 or the M600 uh, which range between 36 volts up to 48 volts. 
Now, the motors, they're the same, but the controllers as to what the firmware is stored onto, they differ. So, despite the fact that this, this controller runs a 48 volt firmware, I will be able to change it if I ever wanted to say retrofit this to the Vita Zima Peak LT, which is a 36 volt battery, using the update firmware provisions regarding this and run this motor in those bikes. Similarly enough, if I ever wanted to take out the M510 on the EMA Peak LT and put it in the Dengfu E10, even though I don't need to because it runs on the M510 anyway, but again, same premise, I would need to swap out the firmware and obviously make sure that it works with a 48 volt battery. Uh, similarly enough, actually, even though we're deviating from the point, the Vita Zima Peak LT, that is capable of being run with a 48 volt battery. So in the future, when I source that, I'll need to obviously do a firmware update or firmware swap so that the motor works with the new battery for that bike. But keep a watchful eye, you'll obviously see that. But again, this is your firmware update and firmware swapping tool. So we've talked about what the best tool does, but obviously we do need to talk about the companion apps which go with it, and of course that being Best and Best Pro. Now, Best was the original app which was designed to work in conjunction with the Best tool. However, quite recently there was a new app known as Best Pro. Now, there are differences between the two, but fundamentally they both offer the same provisions as opposed to what I've just mentioned, diagnostics, parameter tuning, calibration, and firmware update. However, in relation to the parameter tuning, Best Pro does have the edge in relation to certain tweaks you can do, which Best, unfortunately, doesn't support. Now, it is also worth mentioning that Best Pro does optimize the new of the FANG motors in terms of what you can calibrate, such as, again, start angle, max torque, max speed, and so on and so forth. However, Best still has the provisions as to what I just mentioned before, but we'll go into those things in a bit in a second. But the one vital piece of information which you do need to understand in relation to either app is that they are account based. So as I mentioned, in order for you to use both Best and Best Pro, they are account based, meaning that you will need an account with the FANG. Now it is worth mentioning that the account in which you use for either Best or Best Pro is not the same account as to what you would use for other companion apps such as the FANG Go or the FANG Go Plus. These are different accounts, you cannot use one for the other. But fundamentally, in order for you to reap the benefits of either Best or Best Pro, you do need an account Bang. and of course the only way you can get one is to apply for one. Now strictly speaking accounts with the FANG for Best or Best Pro they are designed more for dealers and I'm not going to spend the next five minutes going over the rig roll as to how difficult it was for myself to get an account with the FANG but I will take this opportunity to thank those who were able to get me an account with my with the FANG. But fundamentally I do appreciate that for an end user getting an account with the FANG is not easy. It's not rocket science, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, for those of you familiar with the FANG systems, you'll recognize the existing plug and play concept as to what's been implemented for the best tool. I mean, in front of me, you can clearly see that there are four plugs. Depending on the communication protocol your FANG motor uses, there's a relevant one in order for you to connect into the existing wiring harness. So this one right here, this one is specific for UART. You would simply just make sure that you coincide the direction of the arrows together and then simply plug it in. And in relation to canvas communication protocols, you can clearly see that one is specific for the wiring harness and one is for the display. Again, you can simply just plug them in and it will work. You would then obviously need to make sure that the best tool is connected into some form of a laptop or a computer and have installed on it Best or Best Pro. I'll leave links in the description in order for you to download them freely and of course there is no issues in relation to you getting it up and running. As for navigating through Best or Best Pro, to be honest with you, it's pretty simple. I'm not going to walk you through everything. It's clearly laid out. Navigating through it is seamless. And of course, it even gives you screen prompts as to each parameter or what task you are performing so you understand what is necessary and what instructions you do need to follow. It does depend upon what application or piece of software you do use. If you use Best, 
you do need an account with the phone. There's no getting around that. However, if you use Best Pro, technically you don't, provided that you run it in offline mode. Now, this is where Best and Best Pro have their clear advantages and distinctions between them. Best Pro, even though it is more optimized for the newer Bafang motors, again, MA20, M510, V2, M560, M630, M800, and I think there's a couple more, but I digress. Um, there's certain parameters within that application which allows you to gain benefits which Best, unfortunately, doesn't support. However, Best Pro doesn't support some of the older Bafang motors. It doesn't support any of the UART M, uh, motors, and in relation to the M5 and M600s, it doesn't support those as well. So if you have, again, one of the newer Bafang motors and you run only Best Pro, technically you don't need an account with Bafang provided you run it in offline mode. It's not perfect, I'll be the first to admit, especially if we were to talk about the diagnostic aspect in relation to the Bafang Best tool. For example, let's say for argument's sake you have an issue in relation to the bike not turning on. Now, how Best works is that it will try and establish a communication with everything attached to your e-bike, the system in its entirety. Now, if it doesn't detect or it doesn't recognize something and that's the culprit behind it, the Best tool isn't going to try and overrun a relay in order for it to then gain a communication with the set piece of the, of the system. So for example, here we have two displays as you can see. This display, which is in my hand, this is the DZ41. And uh, unfortunately, this has failed on me, which is a, a bit annoying, but still. Uh, whereas this display, this is the new DPC 2.5.3, which will be going on the Vita C Mafique LT very shortly. Now, because this display has obviously failed, um, obviously, it's not going to try and rectify the reason why it's failed. It's just going to tell me that something is wrong. It's not going to try and repair it. Uh, it physically can't. There is uh, something that's shorted out within the display. Uh, and the same thing goes for any piece of the system which has failed. The best tool isn't designed to try and rework or refix something which has failed. Uh, similarly enough, actually, what the best tool will not do is identify any issues mechanically with the motor. So as you can see here, we have an M600, which I have had to service and crack open. Uh, one of the issues of this motor was that the controller had unfortunately failed. However, internally, there was an issue in which case the actual crack spindle did feel a bit rough. Now, as I turn it now, it feels great. And the reason for that is because I've recently just swapped out the one-way needle bearing and the primary gear. This was the original one which was in it, and I have had to, uh, well, I've been able to pull it apart, and I have been able to salvage certain bits and pieces, but for the purposes of you using this motor, um, I've obviously just put everything brand new in there, and obviously re-greased and re um, what I needed to. Uh, this, just in case the people didn't know, it is reusable, uh, but the reason why I didn't have to reuse it was because the seal around the main gear had failed, and in which case it was letting in debris and moisture around the crank spindle, which then led to the crank spindle uh, moving within the, uh, the the motor main gear, feeling a bit rough. Obviously, you want the seals to make sure that it prevents that from happening. But as I said, the best tool, it's incapable of detecting any issues mechanically regarding the motor. And fundamentally, if you do detect a problem regarding something communicating within the system in its entirety, it's not going to try and fix it. It's just going to identify it. It comes down to you in order for you to source a uh, piece which needs to be put in, in place of. I would have thought the thumbnail of the video would have answered that question, but just in case, I'll break it down for you. For me, this is essential. Uh, it's been one of the most important pieces of kit I've had at my disposal when I've been messing around with one of the newer Bafang motors in which we're now seeing. And I would even argue that for those of you who perform your own services regarding Bafang motors, this is, this is necessary. However, there are those who have older Bafang motors, and truth be told, if we were to just concentrate on the UART spectrum for one second, 
I personally would go as far as to say that this is not necessary for those type of riders. In fact, for those of you who've been messing around with UART motors, BBS01, BBS02, BBS HD, and the M620 and the M400 and hub motors, you've probably been able to get by without this. However, if you've got something canvas communication protocols like M5, M6, M510, M820, and so on and so forth, this is essential. Uh, this has literally saved me so much money in relation to understanding if anything has failed as opposed to guessing and spending unnecessarily in order to rectify the problem. And make no mistake ladies and gentlemen, and I think I've said this previously, as much as you may find some content creators who are quick to say that the fan motors are on the cheaper spectrum of things, and I on the other hand have said otherwise and have said these aren't as cheap as to what you may think. No different than any e-bike system, there is a point in which you do need to invest in the platform. And this, this is me investing in the platform. And I have no doubt that there will be a select few of you out there who will understand that. But I digress. Hopefully this video has been very useful for any one of you who have been interested in understanding what the best tool does in conjunction with best and best pro. Um, if you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to leave them down in the comment sections. And of course, if there's anything you want me to elaborate on, please, by all means, hit me up, DM me, PM me, I'm easy going. But until then, anyway, guys, I'll leave it here. And until the next upload, take it easy, stay safe, peace be the journey, hashtag FABT, and I'll catch you then. Peace out.